Hey everyone, this is Michael again, and welcome to the SmackDown Review. SmackDown tonight was from the Delta Center in Salt Lake City, Utah. And SmackDown tonight, I thought it was a good show, in my opinion. Really enjoy uh, the show. We had uh, the Women's United States Championship Tournament still, you know, ongoing. And tonight we had Chelsea Green. She had taken on Bianca Belair and Blair Davenport. Uh, in the tournament. We also saw L.A. Knight. Yeah! He up, uh, defend the United States Championship against Santos Escobar. We have Bailey and Naomi. They end up taking on Tiffany Stratton and Candice LeRae. And the main event. We have Montez Ford versus Tommaso Ciampa. And we also had Sol Sokoa, star of the show. Where him, Tama Tonga, Jacob Fatu, Tonga Loa, and Bronson Reed, you know, the five guys, you know, for uh, the bloodline that are going to compete in war games uh, next Saturday. And Solo ends up telling Roman that later on in the night, he has to accept his terms of surrendering. And if Roman surrenders, Roman and his crew can finally acknowledge uh, Sol Sokoa. And also in the final segment, we had two returns. And one being the fifth guy for the OG bloodline. And I said uh, that I hope the fifth guy, you know, would be Seth Rollins. But unfortunately on Monday Night Raw, Seth Rollins, you know, end up saying, you know, I don't want to be the fifth guy. And I don't want nothing to do with Roman Reigns. So apparently, Seth Rollins is not the fifth guy. And I will get to uh, explaining who it is when I get to the final segment. But overall, SmackDown was a good show tonight. And before I get into the review, if you guys haven't checked out my previous video... I did a movie review of Wicked, which I saw earlier today. So if you haven't seen my review of that, definitely check it out. Really love the film. I think it's one of the greatest films of this year. And it's on my list of favorite films of the year. And in my opinion, it is a masterpiece. So if you haven't checked out my review of it, uh, definitely go check it out. But SmackDown for next week's show is going to be taped uh, because, of course, the day after Thanksgiving, you know, Black Friday, you know, Triple H, you know, wants, you know, superstars to spend time uh, with their families for, you know, Thanksgiving. And he's also going to do it for Christmas. So good on Triple H on giving the superstars, you know, a chance to spend time with their families, you know, during the holidays. When, you know, Vince was in charge, he would have the superstars, you know, celebrate the holidays and then come back maybe like the next day. If there was a, uh, a Monday night, if there was a SmackDown uh, show or, uh, you know, a WWE live show, he would have them come the day after the holiday. So but good on Triple H uh, for doing that for the superstars. But anyway, let's jump right into the review. SmackDown tonight opened up with Sosakoa. He made his way out along with Tama Tonga, Jacob Fatu, Tonga Loa, and Bronson Reed. Those are your five guys for Solo's uh, bloodline uh, in the uh, War Games match. So all five guys end up getting to the ring. And uh, putting up the ones. So the fans there in Salt Lake City were chanting OTC for Roman to come out. Solo then got on the mic and he told the crowd to acknowledge him. But of course, the fans end up booing Sokoa. Sokoa ended up saying that his crew is ready to dominate at War Games. And so... The fans, once again, end up chanting OTC. Sokoa ended up saying that they are always ready. But Roman Reigns 
is not ready. Solo then went on to say that Roman isn't even in the building yet. He then ended up telling Roman that when he gets there, he needs to meet him in the middle of the ring later on night and for him to accept his terms of surrendering. Sokoa then ended up telling Roman that once Roman surrenders, Roman and his crew can finally acknowledge him. So Sokoa then dropped the mic and that was basically how the segment ended. But Solid open to SmackDown tonight. Very short. You know, Soul just comes out there with Tama Tonga, Jacob Fatu, Tonga Loa, and Bronson Reed. Cuts a promo that's not 10 to 15 minutes tops. Just says, you know, for Roman to accept his terms of surrendering. And, you know, that's that. I'm glad that WWE, you know, didn't let this uh, opening to the show go uh, long. So, good on, you know, just Sosakoa coming out there and, you know, not, you know, wasting anyone's time with 10 to 15 minute uh, promo on Roman Reigns. And then, as SmackDown came back from the commercial, we had the first match of the night, which was the Women's United States Championship Tournament. So, we had Bianca Belair versus Chelsea Green. Versus Blair Davenport. And it was really nice to see Blair Davenport back on TV. And we haven't seen uh, Blair Davenport on TV, you know, in a while. She hasn't been, they haven't given her anything to do. But I thought this was a okay uh, women's match here in the tournament. Match got on the way. Chelsea Green, right from the start. Delivered a roll-up on Bianca. Bianca then rolled uh, Chelsea up. And then uh, Blair Davenport ended up rolling Bianca up. But Bianca ended up kicking out. Chelsea Green then clotheslined Blair Davenport to the outside. Bianca then came in with a shoulder tackle onto Chelsea. Bianca then ended up laying a standard moonsault onto Chelsea. Bianca went for the cover. And Chelsea ended up kicking out. Bianca then grabbed Chelsea, but Chelsea delivered a kick to Bianca's face. Chelsea ended up going for a sunset flip cover onto Bianca, but Blair Davenport ended up breaking up the pin, and Blair Davenport ended up hitting Chelsea with a right hand, to which Chelsea then fell to the outside. Bianca then jumped over the top rope and landed onto Chelsea. So Bianca got on the ring apron. Blair Davenport then tied up Bianca's ponytail up in the ropes. So Blair Davenport climbed to the top rope and jumped onto Bianca's back. So then SmackDown with the commercial. Then when SmackDown came back from the commercial, Chelsea Green was in control of the match. She delivered a rough rider onto Bianca. And uh, Blair Davenport delivered a double stomp onto Chelsea's back. Bianca then slammed Blair Davenport onto the canvas. She ended up going for a standing moonsault, but Blair Davenport got her knees up. Chelsea then delivered a drop kick onto Bianca Belair. Chelsea then ended up falling backwards onto Blair Davenport. Chelsea Green locked in the waist lock onto Blair Davenport, but Bianca then grabbed Chelsea and she ended up laying a double German suplex to both. Uh, Chelsea Green and Blair Davenport. Bianca ended up going for the cover on Blair Davenport and Chelsea broke up the pin. Bianca ended up going for a spear onto Chelsea, but Chelsea moved out of the way and Bianca went into the ring post and Bianca then fell to the outside. Blair Davenport then climbed to the top rope. Chelsea then ended up delivering a kick to uh, Blair Davenport, which slowed uh, Blair down. Chelsea was on the second rope and she landed a suplex to Blair Davenport. Bianca then delivered a 450 splash onto Blair Davenport. She went for the cover and Chelsea threw Bianca to the outside. Chelsea went for the cover, 
but Bianca then dragged Chelsea to the outside, and Bianca threw Chelsea into the barricade. So Bianca then got back into the ring. Bianca then went for the cover on Blair Davenport, but Blair Davenport ended up kicking out. So all of a sudden, we went backstage, and we saw officials there. And we saw Jay Cargill. Jay Cargill was lying down on a cracked windshield of a car. So Bianca ended up seeing that. Bianca then ran to the back uh, to, you know, check on Jay Cargill. And that led to Chelsea Green getting back into the ring. Blair Davenport rolled Chelsea Green up, and Chelsea ended up kicking out. Blair then delivered a kick to Chelsea. She then grabbed Chelsea, but Chelsea reversed that into a unpretty her onto Blair Davenport. Chelsea ended up going for the cover, and there you go. Chelsea Green ended up winning the match. She is moving on in the Women's United States Championship Tournament, which obviously we all knew. I knew that Chelsea Green was going to uh, win this. So, and I have to say that, you know, my prediction, I think Chelsea Green is going to be the first ever Women's United States Champion. I think WWE is going to make her uh, the first ever champion. But overall, it was an okay uh, match here. So then, as SmackDown came back from the commercial, we saw Bianca Belair run to the outside to where Jay Cargill was you know, being loaded into an ambulance. So we saw uh, Nick Aldis out there. Bailey was out there with uh, Naomi. So Bianca ended up getting into the ambulance with Jay Cargill, and the ambulance ended up driving off. So who ended up attacking uh, Jay Cargill? We'll have to wait and see. And now we had L. A night, yeah. He ended up taking on Santos Escobar. This was for the United States Championship. Santos Escobar was accompanied by Electra Lopez. So as the match was about to start, the lights went out, and we had a video of Shinsuke Nakamura uh, playing. Nakamura was speaking in Japanese. Of course, Nakamura made his return last week on SmackDown and attacked LA Knight. So it's leading up to uh, LA Knight versus Shinsuke Nakamura for the United States Championship. So Nakamura talked about Knight and how it is the beginning of his end. So Nakamura, you know, won in uh, that United States Championship. He wants a shot at LA Knight. So as Nakamura's uh, video was playing, Escobar attacked Knight. And so the ref had to break it up. So the ref ended up ringing the bell. The match got on the way. Knight delivered a clothesline onto Escobar. Knight then gripped Escobar. Escobar tripped Knight up onto the ropes. And Knight ended up falling to the outside. Escobar End up delivering a splash over the top rope on tonight on the outside. And that led to SmackDown going to commercial. Then as SmackDown came back from the commercial, Escobar was on the ring apron. And he jumped over the top rope. He landed a flowing senton to Knight. Escobar went for the cover and Knight kicked out. Escobar then threw Knight over the top rope. And Knight ended up landing on the ring apron. Knight ended up landing a show of tackle back into the ring onto Escobar. He then delivered some punches onto Escobar. And Knight ended up landing a neck breaker. Knight ended up going for the cover. And Escobar ended up kicking out. Knight then grabbed Escobar. Escobar came back and delivered some right hands to Knight. Escobar then placed Knight on the top rope. Escobar ended up climbing up to the second rope, but Knight 
headbutted Escobar down. Knight ended up going for an elbow drop, but Nakamura was shown standing on the entranceway. He was just staring at, at Knight, and that distracted Knight. So Escobar then ended up tripping Knight up, and he landed a nice hurricanrana to uh, Knight. Escobar then climbed to the top rope, and he delivered a frog splash to Knight. Escobar then lifted Knight up on his shoulders, but Knight ended up landing on his feet. And Knight then ended up hitting Escobar with the BFT, the Blunt Force Trauma. Knight ended up going for the cover. And there you go. Ellie Knight ended up winning the match, retaining the United States Championship. Post-match, Nakamura then ran down to the ring. And he wasted no time. He got right into the ring. He threw Knight into the ring post you know, several times. So Nakamura then laid into a running kick. He delivered that onto Ellie Knight. And pretty much that was basically that. So it was rinse and repeat of what we saw last week when Nakamura returned and took out Knight. So that was that. Overall, thought this was a decent match from Knight and San Francisco Bar. And then we saw the Moe City Machine Guns. We saw Chris Saban and Alex Shelley. They were with Johnny Gargano. Gargano was talking to uh, to them. He had tried to get himself and Champa a tag team championship match. And the Mosley Machine Guns end up saying to Gargano that the Street Profits deserve a rematch. So Gargano was like, really? The Street Profits deserve it? And the Street Profits, Montez Ford and Angel Dawkins end up coming up. And they end up saying that they have next. And he had telling Gargano that Champa is bad news. So pretty much that was basically that. And then as SmackDown came back from the commercial, we saw Nick Aldis. Nick Aldis ended up asking Nia Jax if she knows anything about what happened to Jay Cargill. Nia Jax ended up saying to Aldis that she doesn't know and that she wanted to take Jade out during war games. And she was helping Tiffany Stratton and Cancer Ray Get ready for their match. So Nia then ended up walking away. Cody Rhodes was shown walking. Nick Aldis ended up running to Cody to try and stop him. But Cody then walked to the ring. We saw Cody walk through gorilla position and out to the arena. So Cody then walked down and he stood in the ring. Cody ended up getting on the mic. He ended up saying that Randy Orton is not here. And he also said that uh, the guys in the back were telling him that Owens is not here tonight. But he doesn't believe that. So Cody ended up asking Owens to come down to the ring. He ended up telling Owens not to keep him waiting. So he heard Kevin Owens' voice being heard. And he was shown walking in between the crowd. Kevin Owens stood on the stairs and he had saying that he was summoned to be here tonight because the great Cody Rhodes wanted him there and you can't deny his request. Kevin Owens ended up saying that Cody isn't even wearing a suit and he deserves better than that. Cody ended up telling Owens that he was summoned to stand in the ring with him. And Owens ended up saying that Cody doesn't get what he wants just because he wants it. So Cody then left the ring. And security ended up stopping Cody from getting to Owens. Owens ended up saying that he sees Cody riled up. And he wants to fight him. He ended up saying before they do that, he wants Cody to tell him why he is upset. So Owens then walked down. And he... Went over the barricade. 
he stood on the commentary table. So Owens ended up blaming Cody for what he did. And Owens ended up saying that he did it because for four years, he fought the bloodline every week. He kept saying that he fought them and they tried to end his career. He kept saying that Roman Reigns tried to end his career. And he never could and never will. And Owens was like, oh, well, in came Cody. We fought together. And that Cody was in the ring at WrestleMania after he won the title. As happy as he could be. Because Cody finished his story. So Owens was like, after that, Roman comes back. And Cody teams with him. And Owens ended up saying that he blames Cody for all that. So Cody ended up telling Owens enough. He ended up saying that him teaming with Roman Reigns has nothing to do with Owens. Cody ended up saying that Owens always needs someone to blame. And no one holds him down more than Kevin Owens. Cody ended up saying that his self-sabotage is next level. And he is obsessed with being the face of WWE. And that Owens does not realize that while he is obsessing with that, he has been synonymous with the company for a decade. And Cody ended up saying that he is one of the best. And everyone knows that but Kevin Owens. Cody ended up saying that the last time him and Owens wrestled one another was at Bash in Berlin. Cody ended up saying that Owens couldn't and didn't pull the trigger. And perhaps he would be standing as WWE champion. And Owens ended up blaming him for that. So Cody ended up saying that Owens finally did pull the trigger. Just on the wrong guy. And that guy was Randy Orton. He ended up saying that Orton is a legend. And he was Owens' friend. And he did not deserve what Owens did to him. So Cody ended up telling Owens that he didn't just bring back a bad move in the pile driver. He crossed every line he could. And this lesson won't be handled by a promo. So Cody ended up saying, oh, it can be tonight. It could be at Survivor Series or Saturday night's main event. He ended up telling Owens that it is coming. And the ball is in Owens' court. So Owens ended up telling Cody if he wants a match, he will get it. But he will get it when he says it is happening. So the fans ended up booing Owens. And Owens was like, oh, well, it is not happening tonight. He kept saying, when it does happen, he is just doing his job. And he will be doing what Cody just asked him to do. And he won't have to worry about him pulling the trigger. Owens ended up saying that he loved Randy Orton, and he hates Cody. So Owens then dropped the mic, and he got off the commentary table and walked back through the crowd. So Cody ended up telling Owens that he doesn't think he hates him. He thinks he hates himself. He then went on to say that when Owens decides to have the match, there is not a single line he won't cross. So Cody ended up throwing the mic, and pretty much that was basically that. But a lot of stuff here that Cody was saying about Owens, you know, is true. But overall, I thought this was a very good segment here between Kevin Owens and Cody Rhodes here. So when will uh, we see this match? I think we will see this match come Saturday night's main event. I don't think we'll see it next Saturday at Survivor Series. I think we will see Kevin Owens versus Cody Rhodes at Saturday night's main event in Long Island. And then we saw Roman Reigns, The Usos, and Sami Zayn. They were backstage. Jay ended up saying that they still need to find a fifth member for War Games. Sami Zayn was like, I'm out of ideas. Jay ended up mentioning Cody Rhodes. Roman was like, no. So Sami Zayn ended up asking him, why not? And Roman ended up telling Sami that that is old news and that he's moved on. Sami Zayn ended up saying to Roman that he doesn't know 
if Seth Rollins is available. Roman Dan looked at Sami Zayn with an angry face on him. Sami Zayn ended up saying, there is no one else. Roman ended up saying that they don't need anyone else. And this is all that matters. This is all they need. He ended up saying they go out together and they are good. And if they are not, they die. But they die together. To which both Jimmy and Jay end up agreeing uh, with Roman. Roman looked at Sammy. Sammy ended up saying to Roman that he is in. He ended up asking what the plan is. And pretty much, you know, that was basically that. And then as SmackDown came back from the commercial, Cody Rhodes was walking backstage. And Carmelo Hayes was there. Carmelo Hayes was talking to two guys. He kept saying, it's about time someone told him about himself. So Cody got all angry at what Carmelo Hayes said. And Cody was like, excuse me? So he ended up asking uh, Carmelo Hayes what he is saying. And Carmelo Hayes ended up saying, they are saying the truth about Randy Orton being next. And Cody then pushed Carmelo Hayes. In came Nick Aldis, who broke it up between Cody and Carmelo Hayes. And Cody ended up telling him that he should reevaluate his first round draft pick. So pretty much that was basically that. But we get in the match next week on the tape show, Carmelo Hayes versus Cody Rhodes. And then we had Bailey and Nia Jax versus Tiffy Stratton and Candice LeRae. Tiffy Stratton and Candice LeRae were accompanied by Nia Jax. And the match was just very meh, in my opinion. Match got underway. Tiffy Stratton and Candice LeRae end up both arguing over who will start the match. But eventually, Tiffy Stratton started off the match with Naomi. Naomi delivered some right hands to Tiffy Stratton, which was followed up by a kick. Naomi ended up throwing Stratton into the ropes, and Naomi delivered a her karana to Stratton. Stratton then rolled to the outside, and she hid behind Nia Jax. Bailey, Bailey then joined Naomi, but Tiffy Stratton and Candice Ray delivered some right hands onto both Bailey and Naomi. Stratton then threw Naomi back into the ring, and Candice then tagged into the ring. Naomi delivered a bulldog onto Stratton, and Bailey then tagged in. Bailey delivered a suicide dive onto Stratton. Candice Ray was thrown to the outside. So then SmackDown went to commercial. Then when SmackDown came back from the commercial, Tiffy Stratton ended up throwing Bailey into the corner. Candice tagged herself into the match. So Bailey ended up trying to sneak in the tag, but Candice Ray ended up kicking Bailey. Because Bailey was trying to uh, sneak in Naomi. So Tiffany ended up tagging herself in. Candice delivered a moonsault off the second rope to Bailey. So Stratton ended up going for the cover. Naomi came in and broke up the pin. So at the end of the match, Nia Jax threw Naomi into the ring steps. The ref called for the bell, so Bailey and Naomi won the match by disqualification. So post-match, EO Sky's music ended up hitting. She ended up coming to the ring. EO ended up hitting Stratton and Candice with some right hands. Nia Jax ended up hitting EO with a right hand and threw her onto the ring apron. EO then delivered a kick onto Nia, and she landed a springboard drop kick to Nia. So in came Raquel Rodriguez and Liv Morgan. Raquel delivered a big boot onto EO. And that led to Rhea Ripley's music end up hitting. Rhea Ripley came out, of course, wearing the face mask, and she had a kendo stick in hand. Rhea Ripley ran to the ring, and Nia Jax, Tiffany Stratton, and Candice LeRae left the ring. Liv Morgan ended up leaving the ring as Rhea Ripley ended up hitting Raquel with the kendo stick. And pretty much that was basically that. But overall, this match was just to have all the women competitors in the War Games match just come out there and brawl. That's all this was. 
So th this was a waste of time, in my opinion. So then, as SmackDown came back from commercial, we had Montez Ford versus Tommaso Ciampa. And this was a decent match here. Match got on the way. Montez Ford ended up getting Ciampa in the corner. He had pinned him with some right hands. Ciampa came back and delivered some right hands onto Montez Ford. Ciampa threw Ford to the ropes, but Ford delivered a drop kick to Ciampa. He went for the cover. And Champa kicked out. Ford then grabbed Champa. Champa came back and delivered a right hand to Ford. He ended up running to the ropes, but Ford delivered a clothesline to Champa. Ford then delivered a kick to the side of Champa's head, and Champa fell to the outside. Ford then delivered a run sent on over the top rope onto Champa. Ford then threw Champa back into the ring, but Champa threw Ford to the outside. Ford ended up getting back onto the ring apron, and Champa ended up laying into Ford with a run knee to his face. So then SmackDown went to commercial. Then when SmackDown came back from the commercial, Montez Ford was in control of the match. He ended up delivering some flying clotheslines to Champa, which was followed by a back suplex. Ford then delivered a standing moonsault onto Champa. He went for the cover, and Champa kicked out. Ford then ended up running towards Champa, but Champa came back and delivered a big boot to Ford. Champa then delivered a chop to Ford's chest. Ford delivered a chop to Champa's chest. Ford then ran toward Champa. Champa then lifted Ford up and threw him onto the top rope. Champa then delivered a swinging neck breaker from the top rope onto Ford. Champa ended up going for the cover, but Montez Ford ended up kicking out. Champa Ended up going for the fairy tale ending, but Ford got out of that, and he had pinned a knee to Champa's face. Ford ended up going up to the top. He jumped off the top rope, but Champa ended up delivering a knee to Ford's face. Champa then grabbed Ford, and Ford reversed that into a cover, and there you go. Montez Ford ended up winning the match. Post match, Champa delivered a right hand from behind onto Montez Ford. Angelo Dawkins ran down to the ring, and he had pinned Ciampa with some right hands. Johnny Gargano then ran down, but he ended up getting grabbed by Angelo Dawkins. Ciampa ended up pinned Dawkins from behind with some right hands, and Gargano ended up breaking it up. Gargano and Ciampa were, were seen arguing in the ring. Ciampa then pushed Gargano. So out came the Motor City Machine Guns, Chris Saban and Alex Shelley. And Champa ended up leaving the ring. So pretty much that was basically that. Overall, decent match it was between Montez Ford and Tommaso Champa. And obviously Montez Ford was going to get the win uh, on this, you know, to build Champa, for them to build Champa up more as a heel. But I can't wait until we see black and gold Champa. You know, old school NXT version of Champa in the black and gold. How that will take place on the main roster. And we're going to see, you know, Tommaso Champa and Johnny Gargano go at it. We're going to see the breakup of DIY and Champa and Gargano are going to go at it. Just like we saw them go at it down in black and gold NXT. Which that feud was one of the best feuds that WWE has ever produced. Go back and watch Champa and Gargano's feud in Black and Gold NXT. Perfection that was. Absolutely amazing. And then as SmackDown came back from the commercial, we had the final segment of the night. And in my opinion, this was the best uh, segment of the night here. Sol Sokoa and the Bloodline. Tama Tonga, Tonga Loa, Jacob Fatu, and Bronson Reed were in the ring. Roman Reigns' music ended up hitting, and he ended up coming out with Jey Uso, Jimmy Uso, and Sami Zayn. So the OG Bloodline got on the ring apron, and they got into the ring. Both Bloodlines teams were standing face-to-face. -face. 
Sosa Cole got on the mic. He ended up telling Roman that he is not here to fight him. And that he still loves him. He ended up saying that he loves all four of them. He always has. And he never stopped loving them. So Sosa ended up saying that he wants them to understand something. He ended up saying that if the four of them join his bloodline, they can run the company for decades. Sokoa ended up telling them that they don't have a fifth man and that they don't have a wise man and they don't have a choice. So Sokoa ended up telling all four guys to surrender and to join him or the four of them will die where they stand. So Sokoa then dangled the mic in front of Roman. Roman then grabbed the mic And all of a sudden, we hear, ladies and gentlemen, and Roman looks shocked, and the crowd erupted. We had the return of Paul Heyman. Of course, the last time we saw Paul Heyman was put through a table at Madison Square Garden. So Paul Heyman walked down. He was wearing a shirt. And also a blazer. He up got on the mic. He did his, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Paul Heyman. He up saying to forgive him, he was put through a table at Madison Square Garden. He up saying perhaps his math is off. But there is no way to do war games four against five. Paul Heyman up saying that math does not commute. To his wise man. No, 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 no. Paul Heyman ended up saying that it's not going to be four versus five. It's going to be five against five. So he then points to the stage. And we add CM Punk's music end up hitting. CM Punk is back. And he walked down. He got into the ring. And... All ten guys began to fight, and the crowd erupted. They were loving what they were seeing. Roman had pinned Sako with the Superman punch. Bronson Reed was the last one thrown out of the ring. And we had the original bloodline with CM Punk standing in the ring. So, really, I'm glad that Punk is the fifth guy for the original bloodline. So the Usos and Sami Zayn jumped onto the bloodline on the outside of the ring. Punk and Roman Reigns looked at each other in the ring. Tama Tonga and Tonga Loa got into the ring. Punk laid out out Tama Tonga with the GTS. Roman Dan ended up hitting Tonga Loa with the spear. Punk and Roman looked at each other. And the fans were chanting for CM Punk. Roman up asking Punk what he is doing here. Paul Heyman then got on the ring apron. The fans were chanting, this is awesome. Roman then looked at Paul Heyman. And the Usos and Sami Zayn got back into the ring. Roman and Punk looked at each other. Punk's music ended up hitting. Punk ended up pointing to Heyman. And that was how SmackDown went off the air. Overall, this was a awesome segment to end the show. This was the best segment of the night. CM Punk being the fifth guy for the original Bloodline is great because, of course, you know you have Roman Reigns who was a Paul Heyman guy, and CM Punk was a Paul Heyman guy. So, two. Uh, Paul Heyman guys being on the same team at for war games, that is awesome. But overall, this match at war games is going to be great with CM Punk being on the original Bloodline team, and they're going to go at it against Solo's uh, Bloodline. So can't wait for this match next Saturday. But overall, SmackDown was a good show tonight. Really enjoyed it. But anyway, that's it for the SmackDown review. 
thank you all for watching. Hope you all enjoyed this review. Definitely give the video a thumbs up. Comment, subscribe. Be sure to check out my movie review of Wicked if you guys haven't seen it. And tomorrow is AEW Full Gear. Don't know if I'll be watching Full Gear, but if I do, I will cover it in my uh, Dynamite uh, review on Wednesday. So, until next video, I'll see you all later.